more content like this, hit the subscribe button and like this video. What the caterpillar calls the end of the world, the master calls the butterfly. This is quoted by Richard Bach. If you were to ponder about what that means, a person might say that it's about perspective, and which brings me to my topic that I want to discuss about content versus context when it comes to our emotions and situations. Like what happens when you get lost in a situation, when our perception of reality limits us from gaining any perspective over that situation. I'm not just talking about what happened, I'm talking about why it happened. Let's take, for instance, a situation where you get cheated on. And just to be clear, I'm not sympathizing with cheaters, nor am I making excuses for them. They are to be held accountable for their actions. What I'm saying is, when you look at a hypothetical situation of someone being cheated on, it's not just the action of being cheated on, that which we must focus on. We must accept that. Yes, we must understand that. Yes, we must put that into context. Yes, and what I mean context is expanding our breadth over that situation. Because if we don't gain any context to that situation, then what do we do? We focus on the action that transpired, which hurt us and our emotions attached to that one single piece of content that which continues to cycle in our mind. What did they do? How did they do it? All this kind of stuff. Because our emotions are attached to that, which drives us insane. And instead, in order for us to actually release the situation, a person must gain context over that whole entire situation, which includes the parties involved and as well as the root cause of it and the past of that person and ourselves and why we reacted. Like we won't know all the information. However, in a situation where somebody cheats on us, we can generalize and assume knowing about that other person, knowing about ourselves, knowing about their parents, our parents, all this stuff in order to expand the bandwidth, the context of the situation. So we're not focusing on the content of the situation. The content being that these people betrayed me or this person betrayed me with someone else. Because if we focus on that content, well, guess what? That betrayal, that, that abandonment, that lack of worthiness will be attached to that content. And it's going to be very difficult for us to forgive. It's going to be very difficult for us to let it go. It's going to be very difficult for us to understand the actual situation and empathize, not sympathize, empathize. We can empathize with the person who cheated on us in that they had some kind of distorted perception of reality based on how they were brought up. We do not have to sympathize with the actions that they took that hurt us. There's a difference. And why I want to bring content and context into this is because it's vital for our understanding when it comes to emotional intelligence. If we don't learn this, then we're just going to be focused on the content of certain situations instead of broadening our horizon and understanding the context. We're going to be focusing on these small actions or these small behaviors or these small things as opposed to gaining perspective over the entirety of it as much as we can. And what I'm, I'm not saying that we have to ignore the content. I'm not saying that either. I'm saying that we have to accept the content. We have to look at everything else that surrounds it, the reality around it, because that is, that is a reality, the content of what had happened. Hypothetically speaking, when someone cheats on us, it's a reality that they fucked somebody else. But there's also a reality that surrounds it. Maybe this person had a bad childhood. Maybe this person was sexually assaulted. Maybe their dad abandoned them. Maybe their mother was abusive. Whatever it may be, these are the co other contents of the reality that actually exists. Because if we focus on the content, that's just us putting our attention and focus on the actions that hurt us thus limiting us to just our perception of reality. And like I said, again, I'm not excusing that type of behavior. What I'm saying is we have to gain perspective over the situation. There's a difference. I mean, it's so natural for us to focus on things that hurt us, of course, because our emotions 
and our past instances that have happened in our childhood, along with our sensory input, will cause us to focus on these things that are familiar to us, that hurt us, especially if we've been abandoned or we've had abusive parents or we have been betrayed in the past. And when you look at the content, usually it causes us to label things. It, us- it causes us to conceptualize oh this meant that they this meant uh, i'm not worthy this meant that i i'm a piece of shit or this meant that i'm not a good boyfriend or i'm not i'm not good enough this is just a natural survival instinct for us to protect ourselves but are those true if we don't gain context is that really true again going back to the hypothetical of someone cheating on you if they had a bad upbringing, we'll just say this again, these are all hypotheticals. If they had a bad upbringing and their dad abused them and abandoned them, their mom was never emotionally available. They never got any support system from their family. The only self-worth that they ever got was from a false sense of love from public approval or from the opposite gender in unhealthy ways. If that's the childhood that they were brought up from, and you date this person, not knowing that until later in the relationship and they ended up cheating on you, where within that past, where within all that context do you come into the into the picture? Just assuming that you didn't meet them until they were an adult. Where were you in that past context? Nowhere. But all those factors, all those aggregating factors played a role in their current decision to have cheated on you and so when we build context we are understanding and uncovering the reality that exists around the content the action that they took against you that is a reality that they cheated on you but that's only a a fraction of reality that isn't the entire reality when we gain context and perspective over an emotional situation such as that it gives us the reality that exists instead of just our perception of reality, which is where our emotions usually lead us down, is to focus on what happened, on the actions that were taken, instead of why and how it happened. And again, you you necessarily don't need specifics and labels for this. This breaches the boundaries of intellectualization. And if we intellectualize on our emotions too much, well, we focus too much on the content. We intellectualize about the wrong things. Or we can. At least I have. Yeah, we need to, we need to expand into the context for causation and not content or that correlation will be our causation. And correlation is not causation. Your emotions are the raw data. We have to put that into perspective and how you interpret it is part of the larger world around you. It's part of the larger reality that exists around us. And the context is what allows us to discern between the true aggregating factors that exist in a situation, especially when it comes to our emotions. Because there's a reality, there's a physical world out there. And how we conceptualize it, how we interpret it, will be based on our past experiences and our sensory input. And we have to distinguish between what happened and why it happened in order to have a clearer picture of the situation at hand and ourselves in that picture. And again, this doesn't have anything to do with just the other person, because if somebody does cheat on us, we still have to look into our own past. Because if we were judged and shamed and guilted and all this kind of stuff, that still plays a role in that situation. And if we don't gain perspective of that, it will play a role. It'll just automatically assign itself to what is easiest or to what is familiar. And if lack of self-worth and lack and self lack of self-esteem is what's familiar and we get cheated on that's exactly what our minds will do in that situation for survival and i mean this isn't easy this will not be an easy thing to understand the why it's going to take time it's going to take patience it's going to take empathy and compassion understanding not just for the other person but for ourselves i also want to bring up a few things before i finish up here the observer effect The observer effect is the fact that observing a situation or phenomenon necessarily changes it. Observer effects are especially prominent in physics, where observation and uncertainty are fundamental aspects of modern quantum mechanics. And what I mean by this is the wave and particle theory. 
And when you look at the wave and particle theory and the wavicle, one of the most important concepts of matter and energy to come out of the century, besides the fact that there are interchangeable states of the same thing, expressed in Einstein's famous quote, E equals mc square, is the fact that either state can act as either a particle or a wave. And when you look at this, when you're looking at something from afar, it's like a wave, right? When you're looking at the landscape that is so far away from us, it's like a wave. It's like wavy. It's because it's not within our actual perception. It's not within our, our peripheral. But then when you actually focus in on something that is within your peripheral, it becomes a particle. It becomes, it's there. The whole question, the, like the whole theory about when a tree falls in the forest, if nobody's around, does it make a sound? Because the wave particle duality is a concept in quantum mechanics that quantum entities exhibit both particle and a wave properties according to the experimental, experimental circumstances. It expresses the inability of the classical concepts particle or wave to fully describe the behavior of quantum scale objects. If you put, if we put our focus on something with our emotions, well, guess what? Such as somebody cheating on us. If we put our focus on them cheating on us, Everything else becomes a wave. The reality around it becomes a wave and we're not gaining perspective on it. We're not putting our focus on the reality that exists around it. What I want to bring into this conversation is because within the observer effect theory, there's a double slit experiment. Double slit experiment clearly demonstrates the ways in which the particles interfere with each other as the electrons pass through the slits and spread out in waves. The experiments also demonstrate the wave-particle duality of subatomic material and the role that observance plays in particle behavior. So if we are observing, so this brings me back to content versus context. If we are observing the content without the context, then we are focusing in on that person cheating on us, that person hurting us. And then what happens is our past experiences, especially if we have past experiences with self-esteem, low self-esteem, low self-worth, all these things. Well, that's exactly what we're observing. And until we can observe the reality that exists around it, the context that exists around our emotional situations or what our emotions have attached to, we're just going to be focusing on what we've been attached to, what we've, what is familiar to us and what our emotions are familiar to. So again, in conclusion, emotions aren't just isolated incidents of content, but are influenced by these isolated incidences of content, which then makes up the context. And we have to understand the why behind all this. Because if we don't understand the why, then we're just going to be focusing on the content, the what. And our emotions, what happens when we do focus on the what? Our emotions get the better of us. I was always angry. I was always, I was always thinking the world was against me because of what had happened to me in the past. Of what had happened to me in the past. Not understanding the why. When we can explore the roots of our emotions, and the why things happened in our past and everyone involved with it in it with, with a sense of empathy, compassion, and understanding. This broadens our perspective. Breadth versus depth, content versus context, focus versus perspective, foveal versus peripheral, micro versus macro. This isn't going to be an easy journey, but it'll be worth it. Remember, emotions are the raw data and how we interpret and process them shapes our reality. We have this ability, and it's within us, to be able to gain the context of the reality of the situation instead of focusing on the content and focusing on what happened. Take, for instance, rain. When it's rainy and gloomy, it can cause a person to be despondent, to feel like there's no hope, but there's no light. But as soon as that light comes out and the rainbow appears, that's when it shows the true colors, the silver lining both literally and metaphorically. For more content like this, hit the subscribe button and like this video.